Tonight, CBS 17 is putting the spotlight on the fentanyl crisis. Since this newscast started, at least one person in America has died from a synthetic opioid. In 2023, CDC data shows more than 74,000 people died from a synthetic opioid, primarily fentanyl. And North Carolina isn't immune from the crisis. Tonight, CBS 17 investigative reporter Mary Smith is digging deeper into the invisible substance that is leaving families heartbroken. This is the amount of fentanyl it can take to kill a person, and it does just that each day in America. This powerful synthetic opioid is ripping families apart, and it has health officials and law enforcement agencies working to find solutions to keep people out of harm's way. She loved everyone, and everyone loved her. In her 24 years on this earth, Heavenly Nelson loved photography, the arts, and socializing. She used to tell me all the time that there was no such thing as strangers. The strangers were friends that we just hadn't met yet. And that's the way she lived her life. One day, Heaven went to a party. Something happened to her at a party, something tragic, and that set her into a tailspin. So my daughter did suffer from a substance use disorder and that was caused by this tragic event. Patricia Drews says her daughter went to a rehabilitation center in Kentucky. Someone brought her back home against my wishes. They had sent me a message and said that they wanted to bring her back, you know, that she wanted to come home, and I refused to bring her home because I wanted her to finish the program. She says her daughter came back to North Carolina to Vance County. 10.48 p.m. on a Monday night, January the 28th, 2019, and my fiance answered the phone, and I heard him say, oh, God, no. Heaven passed away, and months later, Drew says she learned fentanyl took her daughter's life. What did you know about fentanyl prior to your daughter's passing? Absolutely nothing. No one was talking about illicit fentanyl in 2019. I, I had no clue. A silent, unsuspecting killer. Just the tiniest bit of it, two milligrams, is enough to kill the average person. It's not just those that have a substance use disorder dying in this country. Everyone's children are dying. You know, we have infants, we have toddlers, we have teenagers, young adults, those with substance use disorder and those without dying. You know, it affects everyone. According to data from the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services, in 2012, 140 people died from fentanyl. In 2021, the number skyrocketed to 3,117. That's a more than 2,000 percent increase. In Wake County, a more than 8,700 percent increase in deaths from fentanyl from 2012 to 2021. And in Durham County, an 8,900 percent increase. Well, unfortunately, Mary, it's becoming a larger issue every single day, and that's not an over-exaggeration. Um, for an example, last year, uh, my deputy seized approximately 3.7, little less than 4 grams of fentanyl. Earlier this year, we have seized over 300 grams of fentanyl. At the sheriff's office. We are not in any way opening this up. Ever. Evidence yes, technicians yes, are yes, separated yes, from yes. suspected fentanyl by plastic bags. How do you feel having to handle this stuff? Um, not, not great. All of this so, controlled okay. contraband was seized by the sheriff's office. In the room with us, Narcan just in case. We've seized in peels. We've seized peel presses. Marijuana is being laced with fentanyl. So we're seeing it in unimaginable places. The evidence kept behind a door, behind another door, behind another door, along with other items and suspected drugs. This is an industry that is making money. Fentanyl is far cheaper than any other drug to manufacture. This is not just a, a North Carolina or a East Coast problem. The precursor for fentanyl comes from China. The drugs are coming up from the southern border. They're coming across from the northern border. Uh, and they're just infiltrating cities all across the country. And unfortunately, it has made its way to Durham. Provisional data from the CDC states in 2023 there were an estimated 74,702 deaths from synthetic opioids, which is primarily fentanyl. That's slightly down from 2022. Provisional data from the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services from June of this year shows fentanyl-positive deaths 
also trending downward. These are deaths where fentanyl was detected, but the person's official cause of death has not been determined. Yes. While there are reported decreases in deaths, Drews tells us there's so much work to do. After her daughter's death, she founded Forgotten Victims of North Carolina and is the vice president of Lost Voices of Fentanyl. We are the largest fentanyl advocacy group in the country. We host a national event. I know that she did love me very much. Sometimes attending these advocacy events by her side, her daughter's son. He will be my only grandchild. And that's what I call him. He's my gift from God in heaven. Drews tells us she wants more people held accountable in these cases. In North Carolina, there is a death by distribution charge. She tells us no one has been charged in connection to her daughter's death. For CBS 17 News, I'm Mary Smith. And it's not just our area. Fentanyl overdose deaths in the U.S. have outpaced all other drug categories for nearly a decade now. And tonight we're going to show you some of the tools that law enforcement uses to find the drug. That's in our special Saving a Generation, the Fentanyl Crisis, tonight at 9, right here on CBS 17.